Hi, my name is Lane Jin. I'm the director of development for the American Documentary and Animation Film Festival, also known as Amdocs. Uh, we just completed our 13th year and we had a lot of great movies, including The Way of the Shepherd. And today we have the music composer for that film, Angela Shea. Angela, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Leighton, for having me. All right. So, so first of all, tell me how you got involved with this project, because uh, you're not you're not necessarily a filmmaker. You're a music person. How did you get involved with this project? Yeah. So I'm the composer for Way of the Shepherd. Um, actually, it's so funny because ten years ago, um, when I was still going to school, maybe ten ten to twelve years ago, it's been a while. Um, I I would see these huge herds of goats up on the hills when I was going hiking in Berkeley mm -hmm. and and I never knew what they were there for and then fast forward 10 years uh, like maybe this is 2022 um, I get a message from Matt who is the mm -hmm. director for Way of the Shepherd and he tells me that he's doing a short documentary about this goat shepherd up on Berkeley and Oakland Hills and as I see the rough cut of the film I start thinking about how 10 years ago they've been there. And <laughs> I noticed <laughs> after after seeing the rough cuts, I realized that the goats were there to prevent wildfires in the Bay Area. Uh -huh. So it just, it w immediately I was like, yes, I would love to compose for the film. And it took, I think one or two years for for um, for Matt to complete the film and to, to get into, to get it to the final cut. And um, once we got the final cut, we made the music within a week or two, and then, and then it was done. So is this first? Is this first time you did composing for a movie? Uh, no, I've uh, I've done a couple of other shorts, and then also a feature documentary last year about a um, woman climber who ascended oh. the. Ocean. <laughs> so that's that's they're all going through the festival circuit right now. Um, oh, this wow. year. Oh. This year. <laughs> so yeah. this is a big movie year for you. Yeah, yeah. And very exciting because I, I love going to film festivals and I love watching film um, mm -hmm. and meet the people that made the films. So, yeah, it's a big year <laughs> and I'm excited. Now, how did you get to know Maddie and, and how did he did, did you guys know each other previously or or what did he just reach out to you for this film? Yeah, so we're we're all part of this Facebook filmmakers group. And I remember putting my website out there around two years ago, and it was a reel that I had made about, um, it was like a planet Earth-esque trailer type reel, and I composed mm -hmm. music for it. So it was like a nature soundtrack, but also, you know, with a lot of intense moments and epic moments, and it kind of like showcased like the music that I like to do. And it kind of caught his eye, I think, on the Facebook group. So he reached out to me through that Facebook group. Yeah. Oh. After so these Facebook, real. So yeah. Facebook groups are very, very, uh, very helpful, huh? I never thought. I never knew what would come out of it because sometimes I put my website out there and I, I tell people that I'm interested in like composing for music, or comp composing music for nature, and you know any Asian American stories or honestly any like any sort of stories that kind of make this world a better place, and a lot of my opportunities in this last year have come from that. So, oh, wow. Yeah. But you're not just doing movies, too. Let's uh, let's talk about, uh, I believe it's next week, you got a, a gig in the Bay Area. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. It's on April 17th, and it's at the DNA Lounge. Um, I am teaming up with two other Taiwanese Americans mm -hmm. who are, one is an electric cellist and um another one karina is a synth player and also vocalist and also producer and we all like we're, we're getting together i'm gonna have my electric violin and um and we're gonna be doing a couple of original songs together oh wow so yeah. so with your music is opening a lot of doors for you what 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 is the main path for you i mean both or do you do you dream of being a musician and coming back here for Coachella as a performer, or do you, do you want to, you know, put together, you know, be an Oscar nominated music composer or all of it? I mean, what's, what, what, where do you see your path going? It's going like a lot of great directions. Yeah. And to be honest, I feel like every musician and every composer would tell you that there's a lot of residual creativity, like even outside of film. And I think of music very 
with a lot of fluidity as in you know I I love composing for film and making music to stories um, but I also love collaborating with people who have a similar you know who have a similar who have similar values and and people who who really bring out other sides of me um, so so I would say like even though I spend a lot of my time on film music I also um, am trying to develop a lot of my own music and um, things that I you know that I want to play and that I want to um, create more of outside of that. So. And we said this right before we went on air, but you worked with a a, a woman with a great voice, Shauna. Yeah. Can yeah. you talk about that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I met Shauna many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were actually we met at a producer meetup in mm -hmm. Oakland, California. Yeah. And at the time, we were the only two women uh, in, in the producer meetup. So naturally, we gravitated towards each other, and we just really hit it off. And, you know, a couple years later, well, a couple years later, um, her and then two of our other friends, Morgan and Liv, we formed a band that started yep. gigs and performing around the Bay Area, just a lot of, like, small, intimate venues. Um, and... Um, and recently, everyone kind of moved away. Um, mm -hmm. So me and Shauna decided to just collaborate, you know, outside of the band as well. And we made that song fall um, together at a musical retreat when it was during a heat, like a huge heat wave um, <laughs> in Ukiah. I don't know if you've ever been to Ukiah. Um, no, I haven't. Northern California. And um, we had, at that point, um, really gotten to know each other really well. Um, and so the music came really naturally. We decided to make a song together. Um, I sat down in front of the piano and she also, she started singing and within 10 minutes, our song Fall came to be. Mm -hmm. And wow. we had always dreamed for that project to be a Bay Area collaboration. So across, you know, multiple forms of media. So we found dancers. I have some dancer friends who contributed to the music video. Um, I also had some director friends that I've worked with in the past um, composing music for them. And so that's Justin. Um, and we all came together for this one project to make, make that music come to life with a music video, um, including an orchestra as well. So I have some or people like friends from the orchestra too that showed up to, um, to do strings for the, for the piece. So Angela, I think during our conversation, I think I've heard you say you play violin and keyboards. What else do you play? How many, how many instruments do you play? And how, how long have you played each instrument? Yeah, so I grew up playing the piano and the violin. So I, I started playing piano when I was four. And then wow. actually I started playing because, well, my parents enrolled me in piano class because they were watching a... I think it's like a 263 series uh, Taiwanese period drama called oh. Bao Jian, uh, mm -hmm. called Justice Bao. That's his mm -hmm. name. Um, okay. He's really iconic. <laughs> it's based off of a true story. Oh. Um, let's see. Let's see actually how I like what, what he did. Um, he, yeah, so it's like he's a, the story revolves around Bao, a magistrate investigating and solving criminal cases. Kind of like uh, the Asian, the Chinese Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was like it was like a really popular show back in the day for like Taiwanese people. So uh -huh. I remember they were playing it on TV, and I would remember the the way the theme song sounded, and I played it mm -hmm. on, piano and they were just like, "Wow, she played it by ear. Let's enroll her in piano class." And I started getting really into film scoring and composition. I would spend hours. Um, mm -hmm watching TV and just analyzing the music and the score. And I remember my first iconic, like the one that I fell in love with was Through Lion King. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. So <laughs> over time, you know, having been super involved with orchestra, I would play the violin in orchestra and, um, and also like at the same time doing a lot of classical piano. Um, mm -hmm. I started also like, investigating and just like getting really into like some of the Chinese instruments mm -hmm. I grew up in Shanghai so my parents okay. in Taiwan um but mm -hmm. we're we, we lived in Shanghai back in the day when there was absolutely nothing um in mm -hmm. Shanghai. Um, oh. even even we had to even like import di diapers <laughs> oh. and wow. like like milk powder um oh really 
Yeah. And all I remember we would come back every year like for snacks. And the, the one thing that we never got a chance to eat in China was like goldfish and Cheetos. So oh. we would just we would <laughs> store all the goldfish and the Cheetos, you know, all the things that are just junk here. Um, and we would go back and um, and we continue our year of like music, music classes. My siblings and I, we, were, we're all, um, we all play like a couple instruments. But um, last year I got, um, last year I've been trying to figure out how to, um, you know, connect with my roots a little bit more. So I picked up um, the Erhu, which mm-hmm. is Chinese violin. It's a two okay. instrument. You usually see grandpas playing it in the park. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't figure out why it's always grandpas playing in the park. And now after learning it and realizing how long it takes to get really good I realized oh okay that's why it's always grandpas in the in the because they've spent 60 years perfecting their craft <laughs> oh wow <laughs> yeah so so I picked up the Erhu um two years ago and then last year I started taking Guzen lessons I don't know if you've oh. seen the Guzen before um it it's just like a I would say it's like a harp like a Chinese oh. harp but it's uh-huh. um, it's horizontal rather than vertical oh okay you you wear the nails while playing it. Oh, uh, it's like a zither. That's what it is. Oh, uh, I yeah. What is it called again? What we're called? Zither. Uh, gu zhen. Gu zhen. And yeah, I yeah. I I think they were talking about a similar instrument. I'm trying to remember the the context, but I, I can't think of it. Um, yeah. which brings me up to this. What are your musical influences? You talk about classical and then. Mm -hmm. what kind of music influences you now because i mean now that you you know you know we're we're talking about coachella since it was here in our area and then you got your concert what kind of music uh do you listen to and what influences you Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well i listen to a lot of film music because that's just something that i've been extremely um interested and drawn to from the very beginning just just really understanding and analyzing like the emotions that mm-hmm. different instruments bring out. So I, I listen to a lot of film music. Um, I also grew up playing classical, so I had I, I listened to a lot of classical music. Um, but nowadays I listen to a lot of hip hop, um, mm-hmm. R and B, um, indie rock, indie indie music, and and even electronic music. I listen to a lot of electronic music. So <laughs> it, it's a really wide range, and I actually love. Um, I just love listening to all sorts of music. So my music is kind of like influenced by all of these different, yeah, the, the, these different types of genres. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also have been, like, I listened to a lot of Chinese music growing up. Mm-hmm. So I draw a lot of influences from Chinese music too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's it's all over really. And um, yeah, and it's all over. I, I love like I think my ideal um if if I can I'm trying to work on an album this year um, oh. which kind of blends um all of the different Chinese instruments that I've picked up um mm-hmm. along with electronic beats. And then what about genres? Like I you know, what kind of genres did you like to try that maybe you haven't? I mean, I, I heard you talk about electronic music. That sounds like it might be something kind of fun for you, but kind of also outside of your your norm are there genres that you want to try that you haven't maybe experimented with yet yeah actually that's a really great um really great question because <laughs> i i've di- i've literally delved so much into um electronic production this year mm-hmm. um last year i was like very much in film scoring and um it's a it's a different world working with like more traditional instruments but now diving more into like electronic production and sound design i am really really mesmerized by this world um mm-hmm. it's just limited possibilities uh and yet like being able to make your own sound is so it's so cool um so i'm i'm trying i'm actually like exploring blending these different genres that i'm discovering and different types of um you know sound design along with uh film scoring so yeah. wow it's, uh, yeah. it's look at you solution. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I love, yeah, I love sampling like really, really um cool sounds. You know, it sounds from my day to day life. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Just oh wow. Day to day life. Do you go out and record like certain sounds for something to use for a composition? 
yeah a lot of times like I go so I go hiking quite a bit and I will literally take out my phone to sample the other day I sampled some frogs oh wow <laughs> on a hike uh-huh. <laughs> um I've sampled like uh trees and like you know the the, the leaves and stuff kind of like brushing against each other I've sampled birds as well in my music uh-huh. yeah it's um it's a really fun it, it's a fun hobby <laughs> that, wow. that's what I- do and I like to integrate a lot of those sounds into my music wow that's really that's that's really cool I, I, I was I bought those recorders or people talk about going to places to record sounds and I don't I just use Roboto elements when I read sound <laughs> <laughs> but like to kind of go out there and do it yourself that's that's really kind of really cool and really really fascinating um we, if we looked on your playlist what are some of the songs you've been listening to of late whether it's for just relaxation or whatever, what mm-hmm. songs would we find on your playlist? Yeah, that's a great, so I, wow, that's a, let's see. <laughs> let's see what's been in my recent history. Um, well, I've listened to a lot of soundtracks lately, actually. Oh. Um, earlier this year, I listened to a lot of R&B, but this right now, I feel like I've been listening to a lot of soundtracks um let's see is, you, is there is there a composition <laughs> i guess What's that? how do you look at your history of music I'm oh sorry. i don't know i'm not <laughs> are you a spotify user uh i haven't used it in a while <laughs> i've actually been a little bit out of touch with music i used to go to a lot of coachellas and now i'm kind of like i'm a little bit out of it so my friends were just giving yeah. me recommendations I was like, and i was like oh wow <laughs> i need to get back into it yeah, yeah. Actually, with like newer sounds, I'm really into. Um, I don't know if you've heard of James Blake. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, and then Cohen Sound. Um, I discovered them recently because my friend told me about Cohen Sound. They blend a lot of like house and um and bass music with strings and yeah, with really cool like violin sounds and cello sounds. Um, and then Vegan, who does a lot of like, um kind of like hip-hop but he also has a lot of instrumental music Mm. um obviously like yeah I I just I listen to a wide variety (laughs) but I also love um Joe Hisaishi I I see this on my history I've been listening to Joe Hisaishi and um Ryuchi Sakamoto Ryuchi Sakamoto did the score for The Revenant and uh Merry Christmas Mr. Lawrence do okay. you recognize this one? It won the Oscars in 1986. So <laughs> a lot a while ago. A while ago. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Joe Hisaishi did all of the Miyazaki Miyazaki movies, like the animations, um, like The Boy and the Heron. Oh. Um, and Spirited Away. Did, does it ring a bell? <laughs> Any of these? No, I've been watching a lot of commercial stuff. <laughs> like really just, you know, I haven't I haven't delved in as deep as I should. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really really amazing. And Miyazaki, they just won the Oscars actually last year. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, oh. this year. Yeah, the boy and the heron. He had boy him. and the heron. Yeah, I have to look that up. It's a it's amazing. <laughs> it it was really amazing. Um, he hadn't been making films for ten years, and he came mm. back. I think he's like Miyazaki. Let's look at his age. Um, I think he's eighty three now. So. Oh wow. Mm hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. When I think of scores, I think the one there's a couple that I like. One of them was uh, Feel of Dreams. I don't know if you ever seen that. It's a baseball movie. Oh. So a guy a guy builds a baseball field and it's cornfield in Iowa. And it's oh. like a mythical thing, but the music is really kind of powerful because oh. it oh. it's one of those movies where it makes guys cry. Oh wow! One of the few good. films because it's, it's um, but it's a baseball fable. And so in real life, they actually build a baseball field in Iowa. They actually had major league games there. And mm-hmm. they used the soundtrack from the movie, the score. Wow. And it was really powerful because all like Kevin Costner's movie came out of the cornfields wow. and they played the music and he didn't do anything. It was just the music and him walking. And it was just really powerful because wow. there's nothing going on. You're just watching him walk, look around, and then all of a sudden, players come out and wow. and I was just like and and it was because of the music so when you're talking about these soundtracks that's kind of like one thing that started crossing my mind 
That is so awesome. Yeah, like I I love that you paid attention to that. Actually, a lot of times it's very subconscious for people. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's supposed to support the narrative and the story, um, but for mm -hmm. you to notice it and to mm -hmm. for you to notice it like that, I think that's really meaningful. <laughs> that's like oh. what I I do all my life is just notice <laughs> the music behind the film and how it creates the emotions, um, yeah. how how it kind of like leads people in and out of you know the story. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, throughout. Well, it's that Pavlovian thing, because when you hear that music, it brings back certain memories and themes mm. that what it means to you. Mm. And that movie was just very powerful for a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. um, I, I highly recommend you watch it. <laughs> That's really cool. I'm going to look out for that scene. And there is also uh, yeah. Laurie, which is a movie about this black regiment who fought in the Civil War and then the, the, the soundtrack and the songs from that. A lot of people would use oh. it, but that that too was also powerful as oh, well. James Horner, James Horner did the soundtrack for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's a huge influence for me. Obviously, James Horner, the OG, the original John Williams. Obviously, <laughs> oh, um, of, of yeah, course. but that was a really long time ago. <laughs> um, In a galaxy far, far away, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and ET. That was like an iconic one. I feel like yeah, um, Hans Zimmer. You know. Oh yeah. You know, he did Coachella. Right, I know, in 2016, I believe. No, it was, uh, was it 16? Or 2014. Oh, no, no, yeah, he was 2016. Oh, yeah, I got it mixed up with um, um, the guy from Boingo Boingo. Oh, um, is it Danny Elfman? Hold on. Uh, yeah, Danny Elfman, because Danny Elfman did Coachella, like, last year or the year before. And I wanted to watch it because Boingo Boingo is one of my favorite bands. Okay. Uh, did uh dead man party is one of my favorite songs i should say wow yeah. yeah that's the dream honestly i think when film scores become you know something that people want to listen to along with visuals mm -hmm. that is the most satisfying feeling like being able to see or also be a part of an orchestra or like you know a big band um that blends modern music you know like modern instruments and um, right. electronic music with like modern instrument or like more old school instruments you know and then having the visuals play behind it yeah that is yeah that is the dream <laughs> <laughs> well then when you headline Coachella I expect some uh artist passes yeah I would oh my gosh it would be amazing <laughs> to like play at Coachella that would be <laughs> that would be epic <laughs> Um, oh, when you're talking about doing strings, it reminded me uh, when Mark Ronson played Coachella. Because when he did Co Mark Ronson, oh yeah, he did Coachella a couple of years ago, and where everyone's kind of like, "Well, what's he going to do? He doesn't sing." And it was one of the best shows I've seen at Coachella. It was just so good, and he had a little orchestra, and oh, just yeah. it was it was it was just these big sounds, and a few different musicians would pop in and sing some of his songs. Not yeah. Amy Winehouse, but Amy was the year before, and I did catch Amy. Wow. Uh, um, but also, we can't forget, can you talk to me about your experiences being at, at Amdocs this year? What did you think of it? And what were some of your highlights this year at Amdocs? Oh, gosh. Amdocs was my highlight for this year. <laughs> really? Really, truly. Um, because I think just having the community show up and, and really just seeing every single person from just all facets of, you know, all different parts of Palm Springs come together along with the filmmakers who are making such meaningful films. Um, and like everyone kind of like volunteering and, you know, and bringing their best and, and, and just wanting to help. And yeah, being in that mentality, it was amazing to just be a part of that. Um, I had never been in that type of environment before. And I honestly got so inspired. I met some like really close friends from, just being there back to back watching like 15 films a day. <laughs> um, but the energy was so, the energy was amazing. And I had amazing hosts too, Hilda and Hans. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they, they're, they're turning 80 this year. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And Hilda and Hans, um, they provided, it was so nice. They provided accommodations and hosted me in, in their casitas at the back. Mm -hmm. It's been 80 um, and it's, and they have a dog. So every day I would wake up to the dog being like saying good morning to me. And I would take the dog out for a walk, um, and hike along Palm Springs, um, like the deserts of Palm Springs, um, wow. and get ready, 
um, they would make like they would have breakfast too, and then I would show up to um, show up to the, um, the the film festival at M Docs, and it would be just be a sea of super talented people, and also people who had really amazing just like talent, and also just like um, a really like a big heart. Every single person I met just had a huge heart. Um, mm -hmm. and that for me was that was really nice. Um, I felt like at home because um, it's it's just everyone who's like like minded, you know, people who who feel the same way, who who want to do the same for the world, um, and and that's that's so rare. <laughs> I came back home and I was like, I think I just went to my Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So truly, like, it had a huge impact on on me, and I I feel this huge energy um this year just because amdocs happened like earlier this year i guess like at the beginning of the year um you know and for me that's like a big boost for yeah for this rest of the year and i feel really excited to to see what other people are up to now and then also to maybe potentially collaborate and to even yeah to work on more music so mm -hmm. yeah and Layton, well, you're included in the group of people that came together for this event it was for me just out of this world and I was so I came I went um away feeling so fulfilled and yeah <laughs> I'm glad you did I'm, I'm I mean Teddy does an amazing job and uh you know the, the heart and soul of this whole festival was Teddy I just try to amplify what Teddy does yeah Teddy, Teddy is the man amazing. by the way his birthday is tomorrow so please wish oh, him a happy okay. birthday on social we media to, we have to we have to wish him a happy birthday yes yeah yeah Teddy <laughs> Teddy, if Teddy's watching this at any point, Teddy, you are amazing. You've brought together the most amazing people like for this film festival. And I'm forever grateful for that. Yeah. I, I think sweet. connections and these um, bonds that I formed with people there will last a lifetime for sure. I, I feel that I have gotten close to people um, in the seven days more than I've like more than people that I've met, you know, and have known for maybe 20 plus years. <laughs> <laughs> well we loved having you you're always very bright and smiley and so cheery and so no we loved having you at the festival you you had a great spirit i thought you were one of the filmmakers <laughs> well you really are one of the filmmakers but i thought you directed I it was i wish i was you know i wish i was i i look at the films and i'm like this is crazy the amount of um just work and and love and just yeah work going into it you know when we talk about the films at amdocs which which are a few that comes to mind as that you saw that left an impact on you mm. well a lot i think every single a lot honestly um dawn and dusk was amazing mm -hmm. um it was beautiful and i watched oh there were so many i there was one there were a couple of dance ones that really resonated with me um just growing up around very strict teachers and seeing those stories come to life and how kids find a community through dance that was amazing um mm -hmm. Tatiana's film I can't remember the name for it um mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously watching a lot of the animations were really cool yeah. um, Fu did one called fortune cookie and mm. she's from Taiwan and that fortune cookie stop motion animation mm -hmm. really made an impact on me too because I um it was cool she brought her composer there too um and they described the process of like filming the stop motion of the fortune cookie getting mm -hmm. you know getting torn off yeah. and um and what really truly was behind that story was her immigration experience coming from taiwan um into the u.s so it was just it just resonated in a lot of ways um it was abstract but it really it felt it felt true to me um yeah and then I watched also the one the duet um I don't know if oh, you yeah I mean I, I missed it but I I I interviewed I interviewed Lue. her and she was the sweetest yeah Lue and yeah. and unfortunately I had to go do something when her film was screened so I missed it because that's one of the ones I really wanted to see yeah yeah it was too real um it's actually uh -huh. about a composer uh from mm -hmm. China who went right. through the cultural revolution mm -hmm. and now has a 12 year old daughter so he's mm -hmm. seven i believe and then his mm -hmm. daughter's 12 years old 
and yeah. it's gender not just gender gap but also um cultural gap and generation gap and all of these mm -hmm. different between the two and how in the end it's still beautiful um yeah it's just still really beautiful um you should watch it, my interview with her oh yeah i think you i watched what? a bit yeah a, a yeah, little bit before going to yeah, the because we were talking about that and, and she's talking about her mom her mom was from that same generation yeah. and she played yeah. piano and Mm -hmm. And it was funny because she was talking about when she, you know, I don't, I don't know if she, she put it together or we came up with it, but like she was talking about like she, she was kind of the same boat as the little girl in the movie at the yeah. same age. And I was just like, it felt like, I mean, there's just so many parallels with that story with her life as too wow. that I just thought that was really kind of cool. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I love, I, and her mom was there. So when yeah, I was she, there, the questions I had was like, how did this change your relationship with your mom? Because did this help you process, you know, your childhood and, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah. And she, she, and she said it brought her closer to her mom and what, yeah, what it's, it's just, it was amazing to see it on screen. I, I grew up in Shanghai too. So like seeing mm -hmm. all the shots of Shanghai and the cultural differences um, between someone who grew up there and going through the cultural evolution um, versus like a kid from the U.S., you know, that was born mm -hmm. and raised in the U.S. in this generation. Mm -hmm. It was it was like a parallel. Um, oh, yeah. so it, it literally felt like a parallel. Yeah. 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 Um, Very but powerful. I feel like it also highlighted at all a lot of really interesting Asian values like um Chinese values is like hard work and discipline lead to like um success you know mm -hmm. and um and in a lot of ways it's um it's a high pressure environment mm -hmm. but also creates this um this need and this constant growth like this mindset of growth mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that doesn't come very easily in, in my opinion, I feel like in Western culture, it's a little bit different. Um, right. in China, like, I feel like in Asian cultures, there's always this um, need to be better, you know, and like, mm -hmm. you're constantly looking to get better. And um, people are not afraid to tell you if you're not great, you know, or if you fail, <laughs> or if you have flaws, you know, or you, right. if you make a mistake. Right. Uh, yeah, which... I think as a kid, it's um, it's nice to build that like um, you know thick that skin. thick skin exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think Western cultures look at that film and they're like, oh my goodness, why would yeah. you ever force your child to do that? Right. And, um, and you know, having gone through that now, twenty years later, I'm like, I'm really glad I went through it because yeah. where could I build the discipline and where can I build you know all of the yeah, just like the 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 ability to want to get better and to like mm -hmm. sit down and go through some very tough, you know, tough times and just yeah. do it to to get better and to just like get to the point where you want to be, you know. Life um, is about trials and how you get through them. That's kind of how we're raised in a lot of right. ways. You have to go through these trials and sometimes Trial and they're manufactured by your parents being, you know, sometimes it on the outside looks really mean and when you're when you're receiving it, it feels really mean, but when yeah. you get older and you come through it you you're like oh i'm i'm better going through it you know yeah. you don't get better you don't necessarily get better going through nice things you get better overcoming exactly. obstacles exactly 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 yeah and obviously i don't i don't think it's like the end all be all method because no. there's things with expression and creativity when it comes to mm -hmm. like so, you know so focus on like perfection and outcome um right I feel like there can be, you know, blends of like, hey, this is time for you to practice, you know, certain mm -hmm. techniques, but this is also time for you to express yourself. Like maybe right. there's different methods of, um, you know, yeah, different methods of education where, um, you know, you get a blend of both. So, mm -hmm. yeah, because one of the one of the problems or not problems, but one of the things that I, I think back when I when I look back to my childhood is like I have wanted to compose music for mm -hmm. my whole life. I think I've been four years old, four or five, I think it was like my dream, like from the mm -hmm. very beginning. And I had no idea like what paths there were to be able to do that because right. my, my classical piano teacher was very rigid. And mm. the Chinese, he was a Chinese man who went through the cultural revolution mm. and his way of, you know, like keeping his music um, in his life and being able to play piano was to be perfect at it, you know, like mm -hmm. make mistakes, like, really fully invest all your time and energy into technique and mm -hmm. practicing every little bit 
Mm-hmm. Um, and so like all throughout high school, like I never had a chance to, um, you know, delve deep into composition and mm. self-expression. So mm-hmm. now that, um, you know, now that I, I get to do that, it's, it's like a dream come true. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I think it's great because you have you have the blend of both worlds now. You have that discipline, that structure, and and that serves itself well. And then, you know, the expression is uh, what comes from within. And there's no right or wrong with that. It's how you feel and how you express it. And so I think hmm. that's a great way to kind of go through that. And I, you know, I just see that in everyone different ways of life. I was different in terms of I was uh, my parents were always busy, so I kind of in a lot of ways raised myself. And, you know and I always kind of uh, rebelled against all that structure and stuff like that but it it just kind of worked for me but I do have the basis of discipline hard work Mm -hmm. always compared to my more successful cousins oh my god of course (laughs) I'm still getting that like I'm literally getting that like oh this person is xyz you know like yeah I'm like okay great I haven't seen or heard about them in 40 years or 30 20 30 years (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well you'll they'll all see you when you pick up your oscar <laughs> they'll 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 see you when you pick up your oscar <laughs> angela i really enjoyed talking to you We're running out of time but thank you so much for taking the time to talk and and, and share your art with us and we love having you at Cam docs um you were a lot of fun to have and i loved your spirit and meet everyone and i think uh you know that culture of a family it's the people and you you're definitely an important cog to making everyone feel like this was a very special amdoc for everyone so thank you for being there thank you for sharing and uh, hopefully we'll get you back there next year in one yeah. way or another yeah i would love to yeah Layton. it's um it's been one of the best um events that i've gone to and um and i'm super grateful to have been there yeah well we're we're grateful to have you so just to let people know, if you want to come to Amdocs next year and, and see what Angela's talking about, it is March uh, 27th through 31st, and it's going to be in Palm Springs. So uh, keep your eyes op- eyes and ears open. If you uh, have a film, we're taking uh, we're taking submissions already for next year, and uh, then towards the end of the year, we'll have some ticket information for you. But uh, Angela, thank you so much. Loved our conversation, and uh, we'll catch up soon. Okay. Thank you so much, Leighton. All right, take care.